War II created jobs, helping the country emerge from the Great Depression. At the same time, the war became a catalyst for blacks' growing frustration with racial discrimination at home and abroad. The Double V Campaign, which promoted victory over the country's foreign enemies as well as victory over segregation and racism at home, continued to fuel the growing rebellion. Throughout the country, black people are challenging Jim Crow. You literally had hundreds of Rosa Parkses during World War II, thrown off of trains, thrown off of buses, arrested, but continued to challenge the system. Now, the war ends, veterans coming back after fighting abroad in defense of American freedom could not abide by Jim Crow restrictions that told them that they were second-class citizens here at home. Blacks refused to accept that their patriotic military service abroad did not afford them basic civil rights at home in the United States. The Second World War had a tremendous impact not just in terms of setting the stage for change, but in actually provoking change in sports. One year before Jackie Robinson and Branch Rickey integrated baseball's Brooklyn Dodgers, the wheels of change were already in motion in professional football. In 1946, as part of the league's efforts, Dan Reeves, who owned the Cleveland Rams, wanted to move to Los Angeles. He wanted to be close to Hollywood and take advantage of that cashier. He also wanted to move into uh, the Los Angeles Coliseum, which was a public facility. He was prevented from simply just picking up and moving in by a groundswell of black and some white protest and petitions led principally by black sports writers who did not want a segregated team in that public facility. So in order to make that move, Dan Reeves brought in two black players, both from UCLA. One was Kenny Washington, the other was Woody Strode. Washington and Strode had been stars for the UCLA Bruins in the late 1930s and were nicknamed the Gold Dust Twins, a play on the popular brand of soap powder at the time. My first memory uh, of Kenny was when I was in junior high school at Carver Junior High, and uh, Herman Hill took me to Wrigley Field to see him play. After that first time seeing Kenny in action, boy, I wanted to be a football player. If I run across uh, the older generation who may have either heard of him or even seen him play, uh, they would reference him saying he was probably one of the best athletes they'd ever seen. After graduation from UCLA, both Washington and Strode played for the Hollywood Bears of the Pacific Coast Football League, one of the few professional sports leagues to play during World War II and the only professional football league at the time that allowed black players. With the move to Los Angeles completed and the local public pressure growing to integrate the team, the Rams took the NFL's first steps towards breaking the color barrier by signing Washington and Strode. Kenny did it all. I mean, he played quarterback, he kicked extra points, he kicked, kicked field goals, and he played safety on defense. Kenny was a superstar, and he still holds a Ram record of 92 yards of scrimmage. If they could have promoted him, he would probably be the best known black football player in the history of America. He was that good. I find it amazing. I mean, as I get older, um, I realize the importance of, you know, what significance he had as an impact in football at the time. I know when I was in college, my coach at the time, who was probably right around my grandfather's age, was uh, very, very well aware of who my grandfather was because I, he grew up in Los Angeles and he used to talk about him all the time. As a matter of fact, every, every now and again, because he was older, he'd forget he would call me Kenny. While the Rams had signed Washington and Strode, the Cleveland Browns of the All-America Football Conference, a rival league of the NFL, were also breaking down racial barriers in the direction of head coach Paul Brown. Paul